welcome back to the 513 podcast. I'm Nick Nickel, also known as someone here with Bryson today, and we are we're here to talk about the off season. And I know 18 weeks, few weeks of playoff, 18 and weeks, the dreaded off, and then the dreaded off season comes and bites you. Long, but, it's gonna be long, long, long yeah. six months or however that long is. Oh uh, yeah. Weeks. Feels like an eternity, but we're and in the prime of it. Gonna, so. Yeah, but today we're just going to be talking about the thing everyone loves, mock drafts, because you don't get enough of those every week, every day, hour, minute. Every you get creator 50 of them. ever. Yep, so let's do – let, let us do one. We're part of the, yeah, part let, of the the, let's, let's join the party, get some PFF Nick and Bryson, going. Seven, Nick and Bryson, seven round of mock draft. All right. 1.0. There's going to be yep. eight more. I don't know about eight, but all right. <laughs> all right, oh, let's okay. get this going. So I think the like main thing I've been seeing with the mock draft so far of the Bengals is like a debate of who should we get with that first pick if they're available. There's Donnell Wright from Tennessee. If you want to replace Collins or Jonah, there's – by Jim Robinson from Texas, if you want to replace Mixon. There's Michael Mayer from Notre Dame, who is probably one of the best tight end prospects since Kyle Pitts, at least. And he'll be a stud from day one. But my bias aside, Bryson, who did you get with your first pick? Well, obviously everybody should know by now that the Bengals hold pick number 28 in the draft, so we're kind of in that zone. Where if you know your best guy available isn't somebody who's going to start every day, you can kind of just trade back, and that's exactly what I did. There was a wide receiver and some uh, other. I think um, I think there's a quarterback available. I'm not sure who, but there was. I think there was one. Uh, so I was kind of in that zone. I traded back with Jacksonville, received their second round pick, their fourth round pick. Uh, they're second for next year, five for next year, and seven for next year. And so that led me to pick 56, um, a few spots in front of ours, and I got actually got Darnell Wright still at uh, round number two. Who's, he's a really good really good tackle out of Tennessee. Um, you know, you're just talking about it. You're, you're debating on if you want to tackle or you want a running back or do you want to go get another weapon or a corner uh, because those are all certainly positions of need. I went with tackle. I feel like Leo Collins – uh, you can save good money with him. He's 30 years old coming off an ACL tear. You got some options there. Uh, so, you know, just kind of prepare for the future there. It's, uh, got some good outside protection. Darnell kind of graded out really well as well and uh, is very versatile. So, Yeah, I like what, what I, mean, I really like that trade down and you still get Darnell right. It's like match made in heaven. I mean, you could save – what is it, 6 mil with Collins and then 12.5 mil with Jonah if you cut him before free agency starts. So if you get a Darnell Wright or Paris Johnson, that's a day one starter for a rookie. So, But for me, I'm like, okay, if I see Michael Mayer or by Jim Robinson there at 28, I have to pick him. If, I, if both of them are there, then I'm going to be here for a good minute deciding – but thankfully, the draft guides were on my side, and I just got to go with Michael Mayer, who, I mean, the Bengals still have a thing for tight ends out of Notre Dame in the first round. So maybe it works out again. Obviously, Tyler Eifert was great for us. Just really couldn't stay on the field that much, but love him for what yeah. he did for us. And, you know, mm-hmm. Mayer could, Mayer's going to have some big shoes to fill if he, you know, it ends up here, well, given. Eifert's resume, and, you, you know, you still have Hurst on the table as well. So, you know, competition potentially. But it's like for running back, you only get Robinson if you cut Mixon. And meanwhile, for tight end, you can still you can still get Michael Mayer if you re-sign Hayden Hurst because, like, look at the Patriots. They got John New Smith and Hunter Henry. You can get a combo of a tight end one and a tight end two really, for a season, then Mike Rue becomes your primary target the season after, and he gets a year of development with Hayden Hurst. So, I mean, it would 
I feel like it's a win-win scenario if it does come down to getting the best running back in the draft or the best tight end in the draft, and it's a need. So, all right, let's move on. Bryson, what was your next pick in this? So a whopping four selections later, pick 60, which I think is our original draft pick, uh, you know, you've got some contracts running up. Uh, DJ Reader obviously will be done by the end of next year. Um, and then you've got BJ Hill who just signed uh, that big extension last year for about $10 million, but kind of easy to get out to. I kind of went, I feel like we're missing some pass rush on that interior D line. And so I went along and selected Siaki Ika out of Baylor. He's a really good pass rushing uh, defensive tackle. Uh, now one. he didn't register any sacks this, this year, but he did get six last year uh, and more snaps that he played last year. Um, Really, good. he had some really great pass rushing grades for a D tackle. At least I think he was up in the high seventies, low eighties, uh, which is something we haven't had in a while. I mean, you had Larry Ogunjobi and Geno Atkins, but we really haven't had that one-two combo of a run stopper and then a really good pass rusher. Yep. I mean, yeah, as you said, the Bengals they really like to get the replacement a year early, like Dax Hill for Jesse Bates and. All that, but yeah, I, I mean, I would hate losing Higgins Reader. for Green. That's a good yeah, one. T for AJ, and I mean, if you want to be weird, Burrow for Dalton, but nah, but yeah, I mean, cut Dalton, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, like yeah, get that replacement while you can develop them under a great superstar leader, so they become a superstar themselves and. I mean, another year of Lou, maybe you do want to go defensive heavy in the draft and give them a whole season of Lou and Arumo coaching them. But as for me, I didn't. I went three straight offensive players. Uh, my, but my second round pick, I got – I'm sorry if this – I'm sorry if Zach, you see this. I am sorry for trying to pronounce your last name. Zach Chabonet. UCLA running back, he is, I like to call him a faster A.J. Dillon type, you know? Okay. Led the Pac-12 in rush yards, really explosive, which is something we really need in an offense because I feel like Mixon and Pirine, they just lack those explosive, the 20-plus yard play, something that they can do without the offensive line creating a huge hole for them. It's just the running back needs to do something. And I feel like you need to get that big play guy, a person that can get you a lot of yards in a game. Just, but yeah. That kind of brings up a good point because uh, we really haven't had our running backs as of recent years haven't really had that much speed. Mixon is a power guy. Uh, P. Ryan is really a power guy as well. Jeremy Hill was a power guy. Cedric Benson, power guy. Uh, you know, was Taylor, I was too young to remember, but I'm pretty sure he was a power back. Uh, mm -hmm. So all these guys lined up after lined up after lined up. You don't really have these speed guys. And one name comes to my mind when I'm thinking about this, and it's Giovanni Bernard. I keep thinking about those two years that he had under Zach Taylor and how good I personally thought he was under those two years, especially when he got to start in uh, 2020 after Mixon was injured after, I think, game six. So if you could yeah, find a guy game. almost like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this offense can, you know, take that next uh, an, another step. I can't say that next step because we already took that next step, and it's weird to be in these, you know, good years after however many terrible years. So that leads me into my next pick, uh, round three, pick 92, Keandre Miller out of TCU. He's, again, he is one of those bigger backs, but he brings you speed and power one-on-one, -on -one, and he can do it for a lot of downs that they get for, for TCU, he played a lot of downs. Um, he was their three down back, and that's exactly what we need if we're going to replace Mixon as a three down back, obviously, uh, to pair up with P. Ryan again, because I'm sure he'll be back. But, you know, Keandre Miller, he's going to bring you that speed. He's going to bring you that uh, durability that you want, and some toughness is in there for as well. Yeah, I do love Miller. I mean, get someone with a. Uh... I mean, it's something the Bengals also like to do is get draft players that are both leaders and 
win a lot. And that's what Miller does. I believe he was a team captain for TCU last year. And I and TCU went to the playoffs last year, and he was a huge part of that. So just getting players that can help you win, know the culture of winning, and be every that whole 53-man roster being team, but Cincinnati likes. But moving on to my next pick, I'm, I looked at him like, okay, I got my tight end. Got my running back. I got the best skill position front I can get for Burrow. But it's also but I also want to look at the future. Jonah Williams is probably gone. Maybe it's this offseason, maybe it's next, but I think he's gone. And then Lyle well, Collins, he's probably gone. Maybe he signed to win free agency, but with this next pick, I got Tyler Steen out of Alabama. I mean, I he was I mean, as a Bama guy, I mean, he went really good leader, prop wins a lot, big guy, just looked at him a bit. He has a really good pass protection. I feel like right now that's what we got to look at most. I mean, just stop caring about run blocking for a second. Just get five guys that can block for Burrow just for Joe because we are tired of taking five sacks, seven sacks, four sacks. We win. When Burrow isn't sacked, that's it. It's, that's the only factor he needs. All right. And it's the only factor that's stopping him. But well, I will come back to Tyler. Yeah, if you just get this guy who can develop for a year, maybe under Jonah, under some veteran, we get in free agency, and then he's ready to go because obvious, obviously third round, kind of a raw prospect. You don't want to throw – everything in but maybe it's like Cordell Volson maybe he steps right out of the gate and proves to be a good piece yeah I mean I'm not gonna lie I took Tyler Steen with my fourth round pick but I've got one oh more mix in there from the trade down uh so I'll get back to Tyler in a minute uh so I have a little bit of an extra pick is from Jacksonville what I talked about earlier I took safety kind of preparing for the departure of Von Bell you know Maybe he, you know, to kind of take over for Dax, but Von Bell likely gone. Probably not this year. I'm gonna assume they resign him again, but uh, you could see him getting a cut friendly uh, deal. So with the 121st selection, I took safety Jair Brown out of Penn State. Now he's mainly a Jesse Bates type guy. He's gonna play a bit of a deep safety, but he played slot. He played box. He played a lot of box. Um, and hell, he even had 11 snaps on the D line. So, a uh, big tough safety there. He's wow. fast. He had he didn't give up a single touchdown this year. Four picks uh, was I think gave up 36 percent pass completion. I think that was him. I'm not sure. Um, so really good deep safety for you. Uh, and then again, pick four. I took Ty- 131 Tyler Steen out of Bama. Uh, again, really big tackle guy, and you know I agree. Get some guys for Burrow, and uh, we'll win some more ball games. Yep. All right, so I guess moving on to my fourth round pick. I know we have an upcoming interview with Jeff Gunter coming up, but I know he would love this guy, defensive tackle Gerard Clark out of Coastal Carolina, his former teammate on the defensive line. He's I haven't read much into Clark here, but yeah, as you said with uh, Iaki, what is it, Iaki? Siaki Ika. Si- Ika. But with him, it's just you need one, DJ Readers could be gone after next season, and two, we didn't have any pass rush help in the interior. We just need a. So just keep on building with defensive linemen. Maybe you get him in free agency. Maybe you get him here. But what's probably going to happen is we just draft another guy in the third round because that's where you keep doing Zach Carter, Joseph Osai, Sam Hubbard. Every year we have to get a defensive lineman round three. But I, I, was, I was close. I was round four, so we're getting there. If you, if you, it's kind of just you have to take one, and maybe you get a Geno Atkins who we drafted round mm-hmm. four a few years ago. Not a few years ago, like a decade and a half ago. Moving on to round five, I took a linebacker because obviously Pratt Pratt situation is a bit uncertain, kind of, you know, fill the void, kind of 
get some competition back in there. Obviously, you've got ADG. Nonetheless, uh, Henry 202, 202, 202, Henry 202 from Bama, so back-to-back Bama picks. Uh, really, you know, just a linebacker, I guess. Uh, at worst, he can be a special team body, but also compete in some spots as well. Um, he was more of a, a, a run-stopping linebacker, which I really think Pratt kind of was as well. Uh, so, you know. That's really the only explanation I got. See, now, personally, I don't really know many of these late-round prospects yet just because yeah. I'm still coping with the AFC Championship game, and I couldn't care less. So, you know, kind of just based off that. Yeah, well, uh, with my fifth-round pick, I decided to go back to the offensive line and get Juice Scruggs out of Penn State. I like He's that thinking- name. He's listed at center, but I looked at it, and he's very versatile, can play any of the guard spots, and that's I feel like that's something we need most is just depth. I mean, look what happened. Max Shopping and Hakeem Adeniji and Jackson Carmen. I mean, Carmen was good, but, like, with three people out, you just need three more starting caliber players, and I only felt like Carmen was the only one playing like one. The other two were the reason we – not only did we lose the Super Bowl because Riley Reef got injured. Oh, like good old 11. Riley Reef. I forgot about him. And then we lost yeah. the AFC Championship because we lose Collins and Kappa. So, looking back at it, it's just we need this offensive line depth. We got to hit on one of these late-round picks on the line. We just signed someone because getting these seventh-round picks that are just below average at best is not going to cut it anymore. Absolutely, absolutely. Moving on to round six. Uh, kind of got a little fun with this one. Quarterback, quarterback. Not a replacement by any means, but a quarterback. Jaron Hall out of BYU kind of took over for Zach Wilson. Really didn't look too bad. Uh, I think we kind of lived and learned with Zach Wilson, and that's why he's not rated as high as, you know, in my opinion, he should be. He graded out pretty damn good uh, this year for BYU. I think he was in the lower 80s. Uh, now the only problem with him, uh, given was that when he was under pressure, under some heat, he completely sucked. Uh, I'm just going to put that out there. He kind of he, he sucked. Uh, but with a clean pocket, pocket, he graded at a 92 and with a deep and his clean pocket deep ball is just phenomenal graded out at a 94. So a strong arm guy that can really launch the ball downfield uh, during the preseason is kind of guy who I really went with. Kind of develop your own guy and maybe even turn him into some draft picks down the road. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I got a QB round seven, but with my sixth round pick, I got Aubrey Miller Jr. from Jackson State. I'm going to be honest with you. I saw a linebacker. I'm thinking, okay, this could be a potential Pratt replacement. The reason I chose him, I haven't looked at this guy at all. I'm just thinking he got coached by Deion Sanders. He has a cool name, coached by Deion Sanders. Gave me a B grade, so I must have done the right thing. But, yeah, I'm just just thinking uh, maybe like Jackson State players, Colorado players, they're going to be given more chances and higher in draft boards now because – Oh, he was coached by Deion Sanders. He's a really good coach. He's gonna he shows the best out of these guys. So but Absolutely. moving on to the quarter but moving on to the quarterback I took is a guy well mainly my brother loves lawn name, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Remember that. Or whatever. Dorian call him. Thompson Dorian. Robinson. UCLA. Everyone just loves to call him DTR. Fast as hell, throws it great, has a bit of a pick problem, though, but he has a deep ball. Like, he's he's just a perfect QB. Like, he's the perfect backup. I just loved – like, I only watch UCLA games for DTR. That's the only <laughs> That's... reason. That's why I also got love for the Zach guy round two because, oh, I watched him every game because I was watching DTR give read options to that guy. Yeah, I mean, pretty good. I'd like to consider my uh, quarterback evaluations uh, up there with uh, 
NFL quarterbacks evaluations. I think I've nailed damn near every quarterback I evaluated. I evaluated Matt Coral last year. Didn't think he was really going to be great. Turns out he wasn't really that great this year. It was well, like the fourth round rookie and something. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I called Joe Burrow early, and I'm going to take that to the house every time. Round seven, punter Ethan Evans, pretty explan explanatory. Uh, we kind of need a punter. Drew Christman, I love you. Buckeye faithful, you were awesome. But I just feel like we need stability at the position, and I even think that we're, we're going to go as far as signing somebody, which we haven't done in a long-ass time, is sign a new punter. Uh, there's always some good names out there, some, you know, average punters. Really, that's all we need. Don't need too much there, but I drafted Ethan Evans anyway. Kind of get that uh, get that special teams unit rocking and rolling. So, really no information on that guy other than he's got two E names, and so I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I I personally love – Christman, but I could uh, I obviously see why you could put a punting competition for him. It's kind of like Jackson Common last year. Oh, he, I mean, he had his moment, so maybe you should just give him the left guard job. But uh, let's let's see what Cordell Volson can do. Let's see if he can. It's Common's job to lose. I feel like it's like this. It's Drew Christman's job to lose next season. So. But I also I was really, I was really high on Cordell Wilson last year, and I really thought yeah. he was going to do good. I mean, he wasn't Pat. I had high potential on him, and he turned me right. So proud of that. He felt to call me an O line guru. But I think that's all we have for today with with the mock draft. I think it went well. Hopefully, watch all these guys we'll get some draft bus, and we don't draft any of them. That's probably what's going to happen. I don't think yeah. I called our I, – I was really wanting Andrew Booth last year, and obviously that didn't happen. But I'm very oh, happy with Cam Taylor Britt. Yep. But I think that's all we, we have for today. Thanks for listening to the 513 Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, you, whatever social media app you have. Please just follow it. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.